Robert Paulet, Chairman of the Gucci Group, thanks for joining us on INSEAD Knowledge. Is the economic downturn causing sleepless nights? Uh, the luxury goods segment presumably will be hit. Well, you know what, not sleepless nights, but I think there's a certain fear factor that is going through society. Um, if I'm in a store, or if I'm in a taxi, or just walking the streets, what I hear people talking about is the, the fear for their savings. Um, so I think the crisis has hit now what I call the consumer psyche. And that, I think, will influence their buying behavior. We haven't seen it to such a great extent yet, because we've been talking about the last four weeks. But, um, but I do think that it obviously will, uh, it will affect people's, people's buying behavior. You said a short while ago here at the World Knowledge Forum in Seoul, South Korea, that um, you wouldn't be changing your strategy, but you could change your tactics. How will you be changing your tactics? First of all, let me just reaffirm the, the importance of actually sticking to your strategy, because the strategy that you build around brands is a strategy for the longer term. You manage brands for a long life, for longevity, so you don't sort of whisk them around every quarter or every year or every two years. Um, and that is come hell or high water, I always say. Um, but you know what? Times change and there are things that you need to adapt to and in the short term change your tactics. So say for example that your growth goes from 15 to 7 percent, which means you have halved your growth, you're still growing, but you of course will generate slightly lower profits in absolute terms. So you will adjust if you're wise, your capital expenditures uh, and the way that you manage your business. Always staying true to the essence of the brand and to the long term of your strategy. You've been saying here that uh, the brand is the dream and basically you're trying to sell a dream, but you're also trying to get, uh, to bring about an emotional connection. Well, maybe I, if I could change one word in, in, in the way that you asked the question. It's not that we're trying to sell dreams, we do sell dreams. Um, people buy our brands because they want to be part of a particular dream. And the dream for Balenciaga or Boucheron is different than the dream for Gucci or Bottega Veneta or Stella McCartney or Alexander McQueen. Um, so people, before going into a store, they decide, I would like to be part of that dream. And that is an emotional decision. It's an aspirational decision for many. Uh, and then they're seduced when in store, they're seduced by product by really desirable product that you cannot resist. And then the two things come together. The strength of a brand, the, the very differentiated and well, uh, well pronounced essence of that brand that makes the brand very distinguishable and hence people can emotionally attach to it and the desirability of the product sometimes just too good to refuse. It is all about desirability and you spoke here about uh, people needing luxury goods. Uh, my wife will take exception to this but um, I would basically say that people do not need luxury goods. Uh, I can even be more blunt than this. Nobody needs another bag and if I would need a bag I can get a bag very cheaply. So I'm, I'm not searching for something that I put my books in and, and want to carry them around town or I don't know where. That's not what I'm buying. If you want to buy a bag, you can buy any bag, uh, and a lot cheaper for, uh, for, um, for what we sell. But this is not about selling bags or shoes or, or ties or suits. This is about, would you like to be a Gucci man or a Gucci woman? Would you like to be buy into the world of Balenciaga, which is a very specific, very special world? Not many people belong to that world. Now, belonging to that world by acquiring a product of that brand is a very special feeling. Is it difficult to achieve a balance between that exclusivity and making sure that your products are available uh, worldwide through international distribution channels? Well, we do things to actually make sure that we remain exclusive. Um, and, and maybe these statistics would, would surprise you. 80% of all products that the Gucci brand sells are sold through the 255 stores that we have around the world and that is not many stores 255 in the whole world um, that is one so the points of sale are actually quite limited and then within the collections and the collections they they change three to four to five times sometimes a year you have limited uh, you have limited quantity a limited number of product 
per collection, so in shoes or in bags or in leather goods. So the chances that you see somebody buying or walking around with the same type of bag, be it in Mumbai or in New York or in Los Angeles or in Munich, the chances that you would at the same moment in time buy the same bag or be seen with the same bag are very minimal. It's very exclusive. You came to Gucci from Unilever. Um, you brought branding expertise, which I think Gucci was looking for at that stage. Did you find it difficult to manage the creative talent within Gucci? First of all, I actually think, having thought about it, I actually think that we're not managing uh, our talents. We're, not, we're never managing people, actually. We lead and coach our people. Um, but for creativity, which is completely different than anything that I've experienced before in my previous life, um, the way that creativity, the role that creativity plays, it's the lifeblood of our group, of each brand. It's the real lifeblood. You don't manage it, you don't lead it. We actually say we create an environment that allows our creativity to flourish. And it's very much linked to an individual, a specific person who is the creative director for a specific brand, be it Frida Giannini for Gucci or Thomas Meyer for Bottega Veneta. He or she they decide which product is in the collection and not. Nobody else. So not a business side. Um, and they create, and don't forget, they create products that you and I were not yet aware of, uh, that we had a desire for them. Only once we see it, we say, ah, that's exactly what I want. And there are very few people in the world that have this extreme talent, this rare talent, uh, to be able to do that. To visualize and hence create the desires that we have without us being able to express them. To anticipate, uh, anticipate a trend. Absolutely. Especially when people say, ah, mm, I don't like it. But after three months say, wow, wasn't that very foresightful to have created those products or that line of products. When you came into Gucci in 2004, you had ambitious targets. You wanted to double the size of the brand and you wanted to increase the gross margins of the company to something like 70%. Your revenues have been growing pretty rapidly over the past few years, but will the downturn prove to be a major setback for those plans? Well, I think we delivered on both, on both uh, elements. One, we, we grew the revenues, actually we have anticipated so far the, uh, the doubling of the brand in seven years. And secondly, we actually achieved the 70% gross margin already. Now, having done that, gives us, of course, a much better position because the profitability has almost tripled in absolute terms in the last four years. gives you a fantastic starting point to brace, to be able to brace yourself for headwinds um, on the one hand. Secondly, as we said four years ago, we would invest more than 60% of all our investments in Asia Pacific. And that's exactly what we have done. And you saw today the CEO of our Asia Pacific business a Chinese lady, who has delivered on, uh, on the plans to grow, for example, the stores in mainland China from four stores four years ago to 24 stores by the end of this year, which is quite remarkable. So you're hoping that Asia will be able to take up the slack? Well, not hoping, I'm sure, absolutely convinced of it, and it's actually happening as we speak. Um, Asia is delivering its part of the portfolio that we knew that it, would, that, it would, that it would deliver. So as a group, you'll be cutting back on some projects and focusing on cash. I, good, I call it good housekeeping. Uh, when my wife and I talk about uh, our family budget, we say to each other, you know what? Let's wait and see a little bit. Um, let's be a little bit more careful. Um, continue spending and continue to, uh, to give yourself a reward. And if the desire is so big that you cannot say no, you go for it but you do it with a little bit more caution and maybe take a little bit more time before deciding. Robert Paulette, Chairman of the Gucci Group, thanks for joining us on Inside Knowledge. You're welcome, it was a pleasure.